Hello and welcome. As the number of tools in my garage keeps growing, I was in desperate need to make additional room and decided to take up a project that's been on the mind for a while. The goal was to put together a shed that is strong, fits in with the overall house, and provides storage for at least five bikes, along with some other equipment like the lawnmower, wheelbarrow, pressure washer, and maybe even the snowblower during the summer. I looked into buying a kit, but didn't see much savings in time or money by doing that. I also didn't feel many of them were strong enough to hang bikes on the wall. I am certainly not a professional, rather someone that goes through enough YouTube videos to feel confident in taking on a project. I'm sure there are improvements that can be made to what I did here, but that being said, I am overall very satisfied in how things turned out. Let's take a look at the journey. I followed a very detailed plan I found online to help me with this build. Especially for the framing and overall measurements, it helped me a lot. Minor tweaks to the plans were made to fit my specific needs, dimensions, etc. I will leave a link to this in the description. By far, the hardest part of the build was prepping for the foundation. I grossly underestimated how much dirt had to be moved to get rid of the old plant that was in this nook of our house and get to a level base so that there was not a large step up to the shed. Slowly but steadily, using decking blocks and leveling sand, a base to accept the floor frame was created. I tried to get this as level as possible so that only minor adjustments were needed after building the floor frame. To create the floor frame, I used pressure treated 2x6 lumber picked up from the local Home Depot. A tip I saw from one of the YouTube videos was to clamp the two long pieces together and mark the location where each of the joists are to be attached. This tip made all the framing for the shed much easier. I screwed in the joists using three 3 inch Spax outdoor screws and measuring from corner to corner to ensure it was square. Another area where I underestimated the project is to not buy enough screws. I ended up making several trips to Home Depot to get more screws. So please start off by buying the largest quantity of screws that you can find. Once completed, this was a very heavy frame that I had to get creative to move into the shed location. With the frame in place, final leveling was done side to side and front to back and once again making sure everything stayed square. For the floor of the shed, I used a 3 quarter inch tongue and groove OSB subfloor plywood and attached it to the frame using 1.5 inch spax screws. To make life a little easier, I also put on a coat of exterior paint since everything is wide open at this point. The paint is something I had left over from redoing the house trim a few years back. So the colors match the overall house as well. I did the same on the back and one of the sides of the shed before assembly. These sides sit too close to the house so it would not have been possible to paint it later. All the walls of the shed are made from 2x4s cut to length for the plan and covered with half inch OSB. I used the same process as what was followed for the floor frame in building the walls. To attach the walls to the floor frame, I used 3.5 inch screws, making sure that the corners are square and edges aligned flush to the floor frame.
process for the front wall is very similar other than leaving an opening for the door. This is another area where I deviated slightly from the plans and made the opening of the door smaller. This was done to give some more wall space inside the shed for storage purposes. For the rafters, I trimmed the OSB above the side walls to match the angle of the rafters. To create the rafters, I started with placing a 2x4 over the shed between the front and back walls to mark the locations for the notches. This was needed as the overhangs for my shed was different than the plants. It took a few attempts to get these angles correct and I used a jigsaw to create the notches and cut the front and back at an angle to ensure that they were perpendicular to the floor. This was done to make sure that later when the trim is installed, it was also perpendicular to the floor. After being satisfied with one rafter, I used that as a template for the remaining ones. Each one however was test fitted to make sure that it sits properly as there were slight variations between each one. In addition to screwing in the rafters to the walls, I also used hurricane ties for some extra strength. Overhangs were added to both ends of the shed using screws and galvanized tie plates for extra strength. 1x4 pressure treated boards were used for the trim. I added these to the rafters all around the shed before putting on the roof OSB sheet. For the roof, I used the same 3 quarter inch tongue and groove OSB as the floor. This was a little hard to maneuver into place and very hard to get the tongue and groove to lock in. I continued adding trim to the exterior of the shed and put on a coat of primer. The door frame was built out of 2x4s attached using screws that were countersunk. The door panels was covered with half inch plywood and added a coat of primer before hanging. I also put the trim pieces on the door before hanging and ended up doing a small design in the middle. While it turned out cool and became a focal point of the shed, it was actually done because I didn't have enough trim pieces to stretch across the door. Once the door was attached to the shed using hardware picked up from Home Depot, I proceeded to paint the trim using the same paint as the floor, which matched the house trim as well. I also added a coat of exterior white paint to the door. I got a little lucky with the timing of the build because my roof and siding for the house was also getting replaced around the same time frame. So the roofers and the siding crew helped me out by adding the same shingles and siding to the shed as well. If it were not for this, my plan was to pick up underlayment and shingles from Home Depot and just paint the OSB using primer and exterior paint to finish. With the same shingle and siding as the house, the shed blends right in with the house. Overall, I am very satisfied with how things turned out and have been able to move the bikes and lawnmower and a few other things into the shed. While it was my first attempt at framing and putting together something of this magnitude, it really was not very difficult and I really don't think this would be all that much easier to do from a kit. As mentioned earlier in the video, the toughest part was the foundation which you would need to do for a kit shed as well. While I didn't plan for this to be a full tutorial, I hope you were able to get some ideas in putting together a shed of your own. Thank you very much for watching.